we value historic sites, we value museums, um, but we also have a horticulture heritage. It's hard enough being over a hundred years old and maintaining your youthful charms. So having to weather another brutal Syracuse winter doesn't help very much either. It's a season where sunlight is a rumor and you're overexposed and undernourished. Spending each day standing around freezing your thorns off it can kill your spirit, or even kill you. But fear not for the residents of the E.M. Mills Memorial Rose Garden in Thorndon Park, because the Syracuse Rose Society is on the case. So in the winter, we um, hill up the roses by putting either compost or mulch in the center of the plant to keep the temperatures from fluctuating too much to keep the roots from dying. Each April, a team of about 20 volunteers begin preparing the garden for the coming season. This is our first morning that we're opening the park and what we're doing is taking down the burlap from around all the climbers. But we have to put burlap in the fall to protect these climbers so that they don't die over the winter. So now um, we're taking and taking it all down and rolling it up and putting it in the shed. This is the fun part, taking the burlap down because it's very labor intensive in the fall, like several days and this takes hours. And we're all together for the first time. Hooray, it's spring. We prune them, we fertilize them, we weed them, we uh, do whatever they need. You gotta get deep. The work is gritty. Where are you? Aha. Down and dirty. <clears throat> Back breaking and knee aching. Carl Grillo has been volunteering in the garden for 20 years. And even with all the crawling, the bending, and the digging, he'd be the first person to tell you the experience has been rewarding. Okay. Rewarding. Never get tired. Just keep going. <laughs> Gardening sometimes requires good communication skills. Do you talk to the roses? Well, um, occasionally. <laughs> You're gorgeous. Keep at it. You know, just it's a nice day, so you got a chance to grow, and I'll clean it up as best I can so you can grow. Grow or you're demoted. You're going to get out of here, and I'm going to promote somebody else. You're easily replaced. What about the weeds? Do you talk to the weeds? <laughs> that's not talking, that's swearing. Yeah, I'm not talking to them. <laughs> the gardeners spend the early spring clearing out the old and making way for the new. There's ways to prune that stimulate new growth and keep the bush vigorous and healthy. Over times, the leader has lots of short flowering spurs and it wears itself out. It's cutting off the leader and going to the lower down lateral, the side branch, that's really vigorous and creating a new top. A lot of winter kill because the winter was so cold. That leader is now gone and the lateral becomes a new leader. And now that this cane has breathing room and all the energy is going up to the new leader is that all the way along it's going to send out short flowering laterals and we'll get way many more flowers. And with 3,500 rose bushes it takes a while to cut them all back. The Mills Garden is one of the oldest municipal rose gardens in the United States. There's a handful of them um, that date back that far. 
The Syracuse Rose Society is the oldest chapter of the American Rose Society that's still meeting. E.M. Mills was one of the founders of the American Rose Society. Dr. Edmund Mead Mills was a man of many interests and talents. A Methodist minister by trade, he first came to Central New York in 1872 and actually helped construct his first pastorate in the town of Lafayette. And then two years later, established the Brown Memorial United Methodist Church on the west side of Syracuse. Increasingly involved on a national scale with the Methodist Church, he also served a ministry of beauty. Which started right here at his Sumner Avenue home near Syracuse University. By 1911, his rose garden was a renowned spectacle containing about 400 plants of 129 varieties. But Mills was just getting started. That same year, he formed the Syracuse Rose Society and announced plans to make Syracuse the rose capital of the Empire State. Big plans quickly executed. It wasn't long before a public garden was started on three acres in Kirk Park. And then three years later, the roses moved to a location on the Syracuse University campus. But by 1922, the forestry school needed the land to grow trees for student instruction. And so the garden moved once again this time to a two-acre site in a recently landscaped tract named Thorndon. By this point, Mills was the American Rose Society national president. And when the Rose Garden was dedicated in 1924, it was named in his honor. And today, his legacy lives on. The E.M. Mills Rosebush is one of only three in the United States. Created in 1925, the plant is well-traveled. We thought it was lost, so we had to do some research to find it. And it was in England we were able to find it. Eventually imported to America via Canada, then to California, and finally to Syracuse. And then once they were sure that it was going to live in this climate, they sent it to us. When we got it, it was probably this tall, the one the one and only E.M. Mills rosebush. <laughs> and so now, of course, it's just so fragrant and just so lovely that we're thrilled to have it. Pretty proud of this one. This one is very, very special. And here on Rose Day, and you see the people, and they, they're like, ooh, and then on, and you go, ah, oh, my back didn't really hurt that much. Rose Day is the Society's annual community celebration of the garden. Some of these look pretty dead. So things have to be pretty well tidied up by mid-June. And so we're trying to work towards that. And uh, so we'll just keep working hard. We're working two mornings a week and uh, hopefully we'll get caught up and the garden will look great by the middle of June. But precious time has been lost because of weather. And the cleanup for winter has also caused delays. Of course, in the cold winter, uh, we ended up with a lot of kill this year. The people that are weeding are trying to keep up with That's where we really fall down. As a, as a society, they don't have enough members anymore to keep up with the, the maintenance. Welcome to the War of the Weeds. Grab and cut. Oh, what a tangled web they weave. This is what you call, it should never happen. Uh, we've just been so behind. The vine weed not only goes down 18 inches in the ground, it also, because it's a part of the Morning Glory family, it wraps around the roses and chokes the roses. So that's why we're always fighting this vine weed. There's 
an end date. <laughs> Overwhelming to me is there's no end date. It just goes on. No, this we finish it. Are the weeds winning? Not today. No. <laughs> We're fighting them today very much. As the beds are made, beauty awakens. Oh, all the hard work is rewarded. <laughs> and nature has its way. <laughs> we didn't know if anything was going to bloom after this last hard winter. It's really exciting to see the buds. Uh, this year, I wasn't sure whether we were going to see any buds. They all pick their time to come out. The old garden roses will come out first. Those are the older roses. And there are roses here in this old garden section um, that date back to the Middle Ages. And there's wonderful stories and history associated with all of these plants. Like Harrison's Yellow, which dates back to 1820. It's a rose that was hybridized in Lower Manhattan a little north of the Wall Street area when that was the nursery district and there were farms. It's a cross between a Scotch briar and a rose from the Middle East, Rosa fetida persica. Very hardy, incredible bloom, and you could kind of see as the settlers went from the east, the white settlers across the country, they brought this with them and uh, with cuttings and you could follow it across, across the country. It's also known as the Yellow Rose of Texas. When all of this area, which is all old garden roses, comes into bloom, the fragrance, when you get out of your car, you'll go woof! You'll know that you're at a rose garden. And these old roses will give you three to five weeks of the most incredible blooms. A shape, a color, a scent that you're not gonna find in the modern roses. And as time goes on, and we're experiencing climate change. We need the genetic diversity that's in the old roses if we're going to be breeding new roses that'll be able to survive. These guys are survivors. The Syracuse Rose Society isn't just about pruning, weeding, and mulching. It's also about education. We like to teach the public about the roses. So you can see all of these are glandular organs. So on Rose Day, the group's Rosarians are out in force doing just that. As people go into the store, they see the rose, they go, oh, that's beautiful, and they buy it. Now, the big box stores don't tell you this, but that rose is only going to grow in Florida. Sure. It's not going to grow here. This is the day that is the instant gratification, when you see all these people come, and they're so excited and thrilled by the garden and all the work that we do, it makes all the work that we've done since April worth it. When the blooms are on the roses, summer can't be too far behind. Rise up, rise up, everybody gonna rise up. So if you have an appetite for sweets, then let your nose be your guide. It's time to get your buzz on. Mmm, -mm. everybody needs a little taste sometime. Beautiful. <laughs> There's a certain time of year that they come on and it's not a constant thing, like a marigold, so you appreciate the moment. And in a garden, a gardens are really about moments and capturing and savoring those moments. Oh, it smells beautiful. In one way, they all have common characteristics, but they do have other differences. Uh, some are very hardy, and some are rather tender. 
Each individual rose bed, each variety, takes its own sort of time on the stage. And it blooms and then it drops off. Then another area will, will bloom and it drops off. It's just beautiful how it, how it all happens. Every year, they come back. And just about the same time, and the only way that they'll ever not come back is due to us and our activities here. And that's why the Syracuse Rose Society has thrived so much, because there's very dedicated people to the history of this park and the history of the Rose and the love of the Rose. And we stand on the shoulders of the forefathers that taught us what to do. I'm not sure if rose growing is, is maybe out of maybe out of style. Sometimes it's, it's depressing when we can't get new members. I would love to see it go on. I realize I'm I'm only here for um, maybe a short time, and then someone else will take it over as I've taken it over and cared about it. And it's a concern of mine that it, it's perpetuated. And I'd like to come up here when I'm much older than when I'm not involved so much and still see the garden. It's a, a lovely group of people that we all get along and it's like a party. Mm -hmm.